All right. Let's talk about Clove. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm your beautiful host, Young Buffett, and I'm back from work. All of last week I was out. We covered earnings. I came back over the weekend. I come back today. I go to the dentist for an hour. And then you know what happens when I go to the dentist for an hour? This happens. What are you guys doing? I can't leave for one hour? Jeez. So... Jumping, jumping into it, kind of. Uh, this is Finery, by the way. Uh, we talk about stocks all day long, and uh, it's free to join. It's free to hang out. We have a corner over here where you can, uh, where you can cry if you want. We we offer emotional support. We also take family pictures. Everyone gather around. On the count of three, say "ouch." So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely hop over into Finery. Uh, let's come up with a game plan. I want to see a bunch of you guys in here. Uh, it's the first link in my description, so I'll see you there. But I guess let's go through the, the standard flow that we go through, which, by the way, if you're new here, we cover stocks that are subject to short squeezes, stocks that people are talking about. Uh, we talk about crypto. We talk about a lot of different new and fun and exciting things. And uh, one of the first things that we covered was Clove. And uh, what we like to take a look at is Ape Wisdom first off to see what people are talking about. And Apewism covers Wall Street Bets, Wall Street Bets New, Wall Street Bets Elite, Stock, Stock Market, Investing, SPACs, Options, Day Trading, and Short Squeeze subreddits. Number one on that list is Tesla. Uh, they've been getting killed ever since Elon started tweeting. Number two, S&P 500. Uh, volatility. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> it's going to be some volatile times coming up. And then we got NVIDIA. They have earnings coming up. Then we have Prague, Tilray. We got some weed stocks working their way up as there is new legislation coming in place. Rivian is just absolutely killing it. Uh, we've been talking about that in Finery as well. Lucid Motors following along. GameStop, AMC falling off a little bit. Number 13, uh, Facebook, which is called Meta now. But anyways, number 10 is Clove. Uh, earlier today, it was like number 30 something over the weekend. It was number 90 something, but everybody's talking about it and, uh, everybody's mad. So we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get into that in a little bit, but overall public sentiment is about 51% positive nearby words include offering lull up. So if I wish stock like holders bought bag, a H puts even happened sub, uh, yeah. So the dimensions are shooting up. Everyone's talking about what the hell just happened. Uh, it is picking up some traction on Wall Street bets. Uh, don't count Clove out quite yet. Let's see if Wall Street bets gets all by the dippy on it. But we are working our way up the most talked about stocks on Wall Street bets. But what I like to take a look at is this chart because what it does is it gives us a good visualization of the stock price and the positive and negative sentiment and the comment volume and whatnot. We're going to have to check back uh, tomorrow once this refreshes because the stock price is not over there anymore. Um, so we'll see if that volatility creates an increase of people talking about it. And then we'll see if an increase of people talking about it will increase the stock price at all. I'm not sure. We'll see. But what I wanted to take a look at and what I wanted to, to just understand here is... Um, I want to make sure we're looking at the right thing here. So Clove, Clover Health, there we go. All right, so this is Max Payne. If you haven't already seen my video about why Max Payne is important and what we're looking at here, definitely go check that out. I'll link it somewhere. You'll see it somewhere. Uh, but it gives a full breakdown of why we take a look at Max Payne. We've been looking at Max Payne for about a month or so, maybe even more than a month now, and it's been coming true time and time again. But it is the strike price of which... The market makers want Clove to close at at expiration, and we're taking a look at this week. Uh, the market makers want Clove to close around eight dollars. That means everybody who bought all of these calls will lose their money, and all of these people who bought all of these puts will lose their money. So they obviously want it to be at a sweet spot, which is eight for this week. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. I doubt it uh, because we got some very interesting news here. Uh, Clove, let's just skip ahead here. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the dark pool data and we'll, we'll break everything down real quick. But Clove had a stock offering, which is uh, not a good thing. 
if you don't know what that is. And we'll, we'll review that in a second. But we, we all got this notification. Clover Health Investment announces proposed public offering of Class A common stock. And what did that do to the stock? Killed it. So we had an amazing day today. Honestly, it was up, what, 5.59% ripping early market, you know, holding that momentum. It was doing well, bounced off that little max pain a little bit, worked its way, consolidated, had a nice day. It had a good day. And then they just opened their mouth and then <laughs> and then sent it plummeting down. And now we are holding tight on that 684 level. Uh, what's interesting is SoFi did the same thing. They also had a stock offering and Tim pointed out DH also another healthcare company did the same thing. Uh, every stock reacts a little differently to it, depending on the size of their offering. Uh, jumping into the news section of thinkorswim though, uh, it looks like a 35 million share common stock offering. Now that is a lot of shares. We can do the math. I, th I think that's about a 10% dilution. But if you are unfamiliar with what that is, a common stock offering is when a company issues shares as they, they sell shares. Just like how when a company goes and IPOs, they take their company and they look at it and they say, we wanna split this up into a million shares and then they sell those shares. Well, once you're already IPO'd or you did it through a SPAC, once you're already public, and you want to do that again, you have to dilute yourself and you dilute the current amount of shares, which dilution in our industry is almost always a bad thing. Um, they are taking all of the shares, adding new shares. So when you increase supply, that, that if that's not met with an equal or greater than demand, what that does is it lowers the price of your asset. What's concerning about this, well, before we talk about what's concerning, what, why they do this is uh, they, they issue common stock uh, offerings. They do this because it's an alternative to issuing debt. So instead of taking a loan or instead of figuring out other ways to get money or cash, what they do is they just sell stock. They, they take their company, their ownership, they split it up, they give more shares and they collect cash. And now they have more cash in their hands. Typically a company would do this. This is, this is why I think it's a little concerning. Typically companies do this when the stock price is really high. I remember, I think it was DraftKings did this when their stock price was high. Uh, there's plenty of examples of companies that do this. This is a very normal function of the stock market, and this is a very valuable and powerful tool for companies to utilize. But Clove isn't high. Why would they do that? <laughs> we don't know. And I think that's that's what most people are concerned about is why did Clove need so much cash when we just heard in their earnings they had plenty of cash it could be a potential acquisition i've seen that happen before but we don't know and that's why the stock is falling when when there's a lot of unknown going on and there's <laughs> dilution that happens the stock price follows and that's that's pretty much what the cons are of a stock split is it increases the amount of available shares and then it this whole supply and demand thing I just talked about. So why, why that's the theme of this video. Why? And we're going to keep a close eye on why, uh, hopefully we find out why, hopefully they release something, another press release or something to explain. Why would you do that? Um, this is a fantastic opportunity to just point out why diversification is important and um it's important because if you guys have been following along on this channel you know that i only have maybe some of you don't know this but if you've been following from the beginning you know this i only have 409 shares now i say only because some people i've seen on reddit have thousands some people i've seen on the subreddit have tens of thousands now that's a lot, okay? For me, 
I made a separate portfolio. I have a trading account. I have a long-term portfolio I don't touch. I have a public portfolio that I share with you guys all the time on how to grow consistently and stuff. And there's a lot of different portfolios and different strategies that I have. And I created this one to talk about investing in these in these hype stocks and these stocks that people are talking about and stuff. And I scaled in over time. I dollar cost average. You see my first buy was 100 shares at 1380, another 100 at 10. Uh, five and three when we were selling premium we used that premium to buy more shares and then another 50 at 820 then another 50 at 890 then another one because we had another free uh, share that we could buy from the premium that we were collecting from selling puts and selling calls uh, and then my final buy was uh, about uh, two months ago a uh, hundred shares at 770 and i've just been letting it do its thing I'm not buying this thing every single dip, every single time. Now, we need to wait and see how this plays out tomorrow. This could be a potential buy opportunity. Um, but what I need to do is take a look at the other stocks that I own. What am I up on? What am I down on? Does it make sense to invest more in this? It's been consolidating and not doing much recently. Could this be a catalyst for it to get moving? Do we need to wait until next earnings? What are we looking out for? What are some things to pay attention to? And that's why diversification is so important. Now, I'm not saying go put all your money into Clove, go put all your money into AMC and GME and uh, SoFi and this and that. Find some real companies. Find some companies that you know, love, use, see used around you, companies that you understand, companies that you know are going to do what they're doing now, but better um, in the future, more profitably, more efficiently. Companies that are going to stick around. And that's what I've built my portfolios all around. So when something like this happens with some a stock like Clove, it's not the end of the world at all. And it's not going to make me jumpy. I don't have that much invested into this. Up or down, doesn't matter. So we're still going to be holding. We'll still be covering Clove. We'll still be taking a look at what's what. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. There could create some opportunities for uh, selling puts. Uh, we'll take a look at what the put premium is tomorrow. So again, if you haven't already, hop over into Finery. We're going to be talking about some strategies here and the best ways to play this stuff. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, the dark pool data has not refreshed yet. It still shows that there is not that much shorting. The net short volume is 55,000. The net short volume in dollars is 400,000. Those are both positive numbers, uh, which means the shorts are slowly letting off. Uh, again, which is interesting because... Clove then came around and then issued a stock offering. So we'll see how the shorts react to that. It's like the opposite of really good news. So I'm curious to see if potentially shorts will cash out on something like this and just say, okay, I'm done. I'm all, I'm all done with Clove. That'll be interesting. Uh, another interesting thing to note is that hedge funds and uh, other institutions like investment firms and whatnot, uh, they, they all filed their 13F and the 13F is when they have to announce that they own a lot of shares of something. And if you take a look at these shares, there's 5 million, 6 million, 1 million, uh, 100,000, 1.2 million. There's a lot of people like Morgan Stanley's, we got Harbor Investments, um, just the list goes on. Take a look at this 13F from Fintel, uh, a lot of institutional buying. And institutional buying is important because they essentially set a floor and they are investing and they're increasing their position because they see something a little bit longer term in Clove. They might see future potential within the next year, two years, three years, four years, five years. And that's how you should be investing. But nothing in this video should be financial advice or a recommendation or buy or sell anything, but that's how I should be investing. That's how I am investing. And, um, these are the things to take a look out for. Make sure you're diversified. Make sure you're safe. Keep it safe. Keep it small. Keep it fun. That's what I always say. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And with that, I love you. I'm here for you. Let me know if you need anything. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to like the video. Okay, bye.